Okay, we're recording. Hold on. <laughs> I, I gotta go. Okay, this thing keeps falling over. Okay, I gotta turn the fan speed down to okay. F1. We were at category F3 fan. Oh, right. Okay. Now, let me get all natural, you know, act like this is no big deal. Because, yeah. I don't, right. I know I don't want to do this. Well, I, I mean, that's kind of one of the things, um, I wrote a blog forever and I had just a few videos and I could not stand being, having my face on anything. So what is that like? I mean, having my face on everything, isn't it a little uncomfortable? I like it for about a minute to 90 uh -huh. seconds. Yeah. And then, I mean, having to think about me, content, shoot me, <laughs> Yeah. I got to shoot me right. and then I have to look at me and decide if it's worthy then I have to edit me and then I have to edit me and, and watch me and then I have to look at it and then I have to talk about me and then it's, you get evaluated <laughs> and then people want to talk about me and I go yeah. really yeah can we talk about like plants or Teddy or you know okay so that's kind of that's a lot Carolyn on, yeah. <laughs> or Carolyn right? she's so fun to talk about yeah, and Aja and Eric yeah, they're good. um yeah. so that's the hardest part and I just want to say that um I an editor has to come into my life and you know who you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I have tons of content, so. Okay. So, this is a kind of a just out there question. How much money does somebody need to do this? <laughs> I mean, like, you, it's like, I'm I'm poor, I live in an apartment, it's uh, seven, you know, not me, this is an example. This is probably half my viewers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I've poor, been, we've all I'm been there. stuck you in know, a like, home. You know, like, I am working at a job, I'm at zero at the end of every month, and, and I live in an apartment. How much, do, you know, how much do I need to live in an RV? I'm the worst person to ask that. And okay. the reason is I've been, I've done the whole gamut. Okay. From having the big class A and money Unlimited to know. Terms, yeah. So it, I can tell you, it will take. It what, appears that you're living on very little right now. <laughs> little? I mean, like, just for, what's the word? Just for obser by observation. What's, what's, what's the word for less than little? Yeah. You just appear to be living an extreme minimalist financial life. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, I, but I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. I really didn't know that. I knew that, I knew that driving out to, um, Arizona. Oh yeah. Would ask me about quartzite <laughs> okay, okay. when you get will, a chance. Remember, okay. Okay. Just, just a little, uh, little, quartzite, okay. um, money. I mean, people love to talk about money and well, it sometimes feels like the biggest obstacle. How do I live? Yeah. How do I just not? I mean, I I have to pay my rent, I have to buy my food, I have to pay my insurance, I have child support, back payments, whatever. Um, how do you know? How's I it? would. What I did is one of the things I really didn't know how much it cost to be me. Mm -hmm. So when I went to Quartzsite, one of the things I wanted to discover um, Does over this count the as six my months. About no, this does okay. not count. This, okay. You're gonna have to ask that question okay. again. I got my fingers crossed to remember. But I was um, interested. How much it costs to be me with the dog? Mm -hmm. Like, how much does it cost to feed Teddy? Mm -hmm. How much do I eat every day? Which mm -hmm. is a lot. Mm -hmm. I eat three times more than the people I thought around me. Yeah, I must. Um, I don't know what's going on. We both on. have high metabolism. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> it 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 costs more to feed me than I thought. I know. Yeah. Um, and then the nutrients and the supplements that I can't live without. So mm -hmm. I would say my goal is to um, the minimum for to be able to afford like dental repair in Mexico, not mm -hmm. the United States, but I would say I want, I need 12 to 1500 if a month, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. If I was, cause you have to pay taxes, but the, the, the net of that of 1500 is probably 1200. Mm -hmm. And out of that, so you think netting 1200 a month, you could live in an RV. Oh, extraordinary. Cause that's okay, yeah. three times more than I had. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot more than you had. Yeah. No, I'm just, cause I don't want people to do what I did yeah. because I, I, like I told in the last mm -hmm. interview, I wasn't there saying, I'm going to show people I'm going to do this for any reason other than I'm going to live my dream. Mm -hmm. And my dream is to say, it wasn't to live off a dash outlet. Right. right. It wasn't to live in an RV that had nothing. Right. But I just happened to get my dream, yeah. <laughs> which was, I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I really did have to learn how to use the water, the, the spray pump and, um, mm -hmm. live without so ice and have a fridge. So I would say that, I mean, I probably did it on 600, 600 a month or so with a paid off RV. Yeah. Well, no RV. I mean, I had liability insurance, not full coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, there's things, it was amazing 
what you could live without because I like well you're not I'm not what traveling I'm not drive I'm not first of all the one thing I really really people need to understand because they keep saying get back on the road I'm not a travel channel mm -hmm. I don't intend to be a travel channel I'm not going to show you how much I, unless it's relevant to my story what I'm seeing evolve here is is what I want. Which and is what? I want to share the um, what it feels like to jump off a cliff <laughs> and land in the desert. Yeah. That's what you I did. Because you really did. Yeah, yeah, you really made a leap. Yeah. With very few resources. And no, no support, really. Emotionally or financially. Zero. Yeah. And we have a very large family. Right. And so you can yes, validate or verify yeah, that. Yeah. Um, that was a difficult exit and that was a hard time. Yeah. It so. wasn't hard. I, I was like, wow, interesting. I always was thankful for the information. Mm -hmm. and but your family's very conventional. Yes. So this is not something that's going to make any. And I'm sure some of your viewers are challenging by the same thing. There is nobody in your family. I think this is pretty cool. But people don't like your RV pulling up in front of their million dollar homes. I mean, this not, is. I haven't seen two brothers. Yeah. I've been here almost two and a half months. It's not because they don't want to see me. Mm -hmm. It's just that they just don't want to see it's your complicated. RV. <laughs> they don't want to see my RV. Well, their HOA doesn't allow your vehicle to enter their neighborhood. One brother's, yeah. I don't think you can even drive down the street. Yeah, I think they just pull you over. And then, yeah, you get But pulled. that's a real thing because you're defying conventions by choosing to live in your vehicle. And families don't support that choice. And that's that's something that a lot of people probably struggle with. I think so. A lot of viewers are going through the same thing. Like what? they're living by they say, Oh, I'm living vicariously through you and I'm like but can't they just go put a shed in their backyard and live minimally? Because mm -hmm. what they're fantasizing about is like, I wanna live in a van mm -hmm. or they say, I'm gonna get a van and drive out to Hey, if if you don't have the money, don't risk it. Don't risk getting a van that needs, gets broke down, and you know mm -hmm. if you don't have people to, but to support you, you. Risked it. I risked it because I was dying. Well, see, there are probably people listening to your channel that are dying. I was dying, dying in it their just, job. Yeah, I know, and that's why I want you to tell this story. It's so I'm beautiful. I mean, that's what's important about it. Because I, I was dying of programming. Yes. People programmed me. Well, no, that's not true. I've always been sort of a creative entrepreneur, mm -hmm. so I pushed it. But I was dying emotionally, mm -hmm. and people were like, "Yep, this is as healthy as you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. This is all you're gonna have." Right. And, and you're my were offering a type of help to you that you didn't want, which was to they would. I do know that the help being offered was to get you what in their view is yeah stabilized into a home and into a job and into a conventional lifestyle. That was into the debt. only type of they help. They said, we'll yeah. help you get a duplex and a car and a job yeah. and clothes. And they were and I pretty go, angry that you wouldn't accept that help. Yeah. But you, so it was, it was a confusing experience. It was confusing because I was, my whole life with my family, I was, my reputation was, you're the most generous, funny, giving, right. loving, mm -hmm. nurturing, foodie. So people did want to give, but in a very specific way. That's such a good description because I don't mm -hmm. want to sound like a. I'm not a victim of my no, family. No, I, you know, it. I can only tell the can't tell the story as a mm -hmm. victim because I can only see how it served me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a couple family members I feel like a victim of. <laughs> there's no names because right, right. they don't watch the channel anyway. <laughs> right, they don't. You don't have to worry. Eventually, they would. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, I'm kidding. Yeah, but so I can tell it but, brings up a lot of feelings when you talk about oh, how it, you were dying. Because you were saying, no, viewers, don't risk it. Don't do this if you can't. But you were dying. And so I'm kind of wondering where that leaves them. Because it's a conflict of what I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying, don't do what I what do. What if she's, you know, what trapped if someone else in this miserable dying? job and her husband just ran off with somebody and left her with $100,000 in debt and she's like, oh my God. Yeah. I'm dying. I think that, um, yeah. I And now people have emailed me and messaged me on Facebook and said, you know, I, w I was just waiting to die. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to mention their names, but obviously, but, um, and they're saying now they want to live. And of course they're on my protocol, which is, mm -hmm. um, Kayani, which changed my life three and a half years ago, mm -hmm. February in February of whatever year that was. Don't tell anybody I'm taking Kayani. It I'm not going to so tell anybody. <laughs> no, I know because you fought it. How I, I have ridiculed and shamed and laughed at Kiani. And it's yes, Kayani. I know. Whatever, won't even say whatever right. it is. And For how um, long? Three and a half years. Well, yeah, whatever. But it does actually have a lot of good ingredients in it. Now I understand. So whatever, and but. 
I have That's before videos when your son wasn't on Kayani, yes, and I have after. Well, I haven't got the after yet. Because I don't want to be like an infomercial, but, right, but I, you should tell people not to go off on a different tangent here, but is not just say, oh, take this packet. But what I need to do is don't trust me. Look at the ingredients, go research it. See if you can compile this more cheaply because that's what I did. I saw and you couldn't do it. I couldn't. And so I saw that the B, all the B vitamins the that are really good for kids. And then the inositol, which WebMD actually said. WebMD um, addresses it. Yeah. Here comes my kiddo. Here comes, speaking of. Um, so, but yeah, the Kayani, um, is changed my life and, and it gave me, um, it, it deals with anxiety. So what I tell people, if you have anxiety, mm -hmm. you have to deal with your anxiety before you get on the road, mm -hmm. before you give up everything and get on the road. You can't have anxiety because you won't make decisions that are in your best interest. I don't know. I was terrified the whole time I was taking my trip. Absolutely terrified. And so what I told people but was... You didn't have to be. I know, but what I told people is um, just be brave. <laughs> I mean, sometimes there are people who live with just paralyzing anxiety and you learn to live with it. And it's like you learn... And you don't have to. But if you have it and you're not well yet, you just... The only other option is to say be afraid and still do it. I mean, you can be afraid and not do it or you can be afraid and do it. I think, I think that um, it... I just... I've watched people's anxiety go away, yeah. and I don't want people to jump off a cliff with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have anxiety when I jumped off the cliff three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you weren't afraid. Now, uh, you know. I, I wasn't afraid of fibromyalgia because it was dormant mm -hmm. 80%, mm -hmm. um, and it's still... But sometimes I think that's the myth of the RV woman, is that she's somehow fearless, braver, stronger, wiser, oh, yeah. smarter than the rest of us. You know, like that somehow she is different than me. I'm not capable. That's like, what I used to watch and think. There wasn't many women on right. YouTube doing this. And so and I'm trying to put I out I want there. people to know how incapable you actually are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need to interview and that you. Are you. Still Can able I interview to do you this? about no. me? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Uh, how incapable I am. But yes. how you do this as a flawed human being. In all, in all sincerity. Like you did it without financial resources. That's the name you of did this it. video. Yep. Yeah. Without the emotional resources that you would wish to have had, without the financial resources you wish that you had, you without did. the family, right. without because the support, I was alone. That's who's listening to you, right? The people now. that feel right. alone, right? They're, oh, she's alone. He's alone. They, their relationships might be fractured. Their family thinks they're crazy. They're absolutely broke. They maybe want to kill themselves, and they're thinking maybe if I live in a van, I'm going to be okay. Right. I'm going to call this. The flawed, what did you call me? I don't know. <laughs> you gave me the title of this video, <laughs> okay. like in, incapable, flawed something. That's but that, but that's, but just you know, I just know that people can idealize, as I have been the viewer, that you idealize the people out there, thinking, oh, they're, that somehow she's yes, better than me. That's what she's I, just better than me. And um, and I yeah, just, I just that's why I want your real story out there. And that's why I like for women to tell their stories because we connect with each other and we empower each other. And that's, by the way, this is a, we now interrupt this program <laughs> for, for commercial. I'm for getting commercial, compensated now. For a commercial paid announcement. Unfortunately, no. my product is free, so I am not receiving it. Jennifer does this for a living and she helps women tell their stories. Um, which I know you probably think, well, she constantly interrupts me. How does she <laughs> yeah. But that's our family thing. Yeah, so. that's more and that's just. Because we have, we finally got you this interview. This is actually not how I work with my clients. It's not how she my works. Sister. I am not a client no. of Jennifer, but she does love women's stories, and um, and yes. she does this for a living, and she, and she offers her story um, class for free. Class for free. I, I used to get paid for it, but now. So it's watch for my uh, description oh, and my the links. The okay. um, watch for the links, um, but she has she's helped lots of women. And we're going to pause for just a moment. Look at that full moon and the sunset.